What'd you guys think of that video? Pretty great, huh? I, I especially like the, uh, this church's work to try to get past a lot of the obstacles uh, that people have to going to church. Uh, because you and I probably both know a lot of those things. There's a lot of obstacles for people that have never been in the church before, or let's face it, have been hurt by the church before, that prevent them from ever coming back or desiring to come back to church. And I feel like this church does a really good way of trying to push past all of that, to push past all of those obstacles that the church erects itself oftentimes. But I got to thinking about this. There's this one line within the text that I really, really like, and I used to really, really hate. I'll be honest with you. And that's the one where they say it's not about a religion. It's about a relationship. I used to hate that line. Why? Because I get it and you get it too. Relationship especially in the life of a, a church, of any communal body, needs the organization. It needs religion, right? Religion is simply the, the system of how things work, how we practice faith and worship together. It's about the organizing piece of it. Religion's not bad, necessarily. Religion's just a way of, of organizing. And, and so to say that it's about a relationship and not necessarily about religion isn't quite right. You, you can't go there with, with Christianity. But I have come to love that statement too, especially in, in recent years. Because here's the thing. What happens when our systems of organization, our systems of trying to do things decently and in order, for us Presbyterians, right? What happens when those systems, those ways of organizing, become the obstacles to faith, become the obstacles for the people we're trying to reach out to. Because if we look around our world today, isn't that what it seems like? That people don't want to join, they don't want to be part of the institution, they don't want to be part of this, this group that they don't quite trust. And you ask people around and they don't have a problem with Jesus all that much. They don't have a problem with what Jesus says and what Jesus does and really what Jesus stands for, but they don't want to be a part of the church. They don't want to be a part of that place they see as judgmental, as limiting, as restrictive and exclusionary. Because here's, here's the thing about communal life together. It's inherently restricting. It has to be. To be in faith together, you have to have boundaries. You have to have uh, rules. You have to have uh, to get rid of some of that gray area so that you're establishing lines and, and, and common values that you can all live in together. You need that stuff. You need it to be part of community together. But what happens when our religion, our organizing becomes barriers to loving relationship, to developing a relationship with God and with each other. Then what do you do? I, I think that's the, the point that they're making in this is don't worry about all the systematic stuff. That's important stuff, but at the heart of Christianity is, is relationship. It's relationship with God. It's relationship with each other. It's relationship with the world. And the way we interact with, with the world. And how do we do that? What's this relationship all about? Well, you and I have an idea. It's about the grace of God and Jesus Christ, isn't it? That's what this relationship is centered on. It's about that special kind of love that we see in Jesus Christ that shapes everything else. So really and truly, the way we organize the systems that we have and fashion are tools in order to foster that relationship individually and, and together. And when those systems and those ways of organizing no longer uh, foster that relationship building, then they're not doing what they're intended to do. They're not building up the body of Christ, which is what 
Paul says is our call as the church. What do we do about that? What do we do about that when people look in from the outside at us and see that, you know, their message and then the ways they're doing things don't seem to gel together anymore. They don't seem to invite and welcome and embrace. Look at our our passage this morning. And you're probably wondering, where's Adam going with this? I don't see that in the passage anywhere. Well, you see that here is, is Jesus. He calls us to be fishers of people. And then immediately after, he's sitting at the table of sinners and, and outcasts and tax collectors. He's not sitting with the religious leaders. The righteous people is sitting with the nobodies, you know, the enemies to some extent. The terrible people, not the righteous people. It's almost like Jesus is throwing out that legalistic playbook that the uh, religious authorities are playing with and trying to operate by. He's saying, yeah, toss that out. The system that we're a part of, that we have organized together, is not serving the function it's supposed to. It's not loving the way we're supposed to. It's not fostering the development of relationships the way it's intended to. And so it's time to transform it, to shift it, to change it, not to get rid of it, but so that it begins to serve God's good and glorious purposes again, to reform it. We're part of the Reformed Church, my friends. We know about reforming. We know that God is continually reforming the church, and that includes the individual congregations, our traditions, our local things, but also the larger church too so that we can foster relationship with Jesus Christ, with God, with each other, and with the world in the guise, in the lens of this grace, this grace that we're all about in the church. So here's my challenge. Here's something to think about anyway for our church. What does this tell us? What wisdom does this give us as a congregation? And, and I've been thinking a lot about this, in, especially in this past year. Uh, and as we're preparing to come back to in-person worship and, and in-person church activities again, yeah, I think the uh, temptation is to come back the way we were. Let's get things back to normal. Get in the same room together, enjoy each other's company. And friends, I'll tell you what, I'm ready for that. I'm ready to be with you guys again, to, uh, to listen and to teach and to, and to love one another. I'm ready for that. But I think we would be remiss to think about our coming back, our reunion as just about us. I think we have an opportunity here to be more than we were before. We have an opportunity here to, to make our table bigger, to widen it to invite more people to become a part of it. Not just the people we know, friends and family, but but sinners and outcasts, tax collectors, people from the community that we don't even know, the unchurched people all around us. How can we make our table big enough for them? How can we create this place of welcome and invitation? But here's the thing uh, about this table. It's not the table from within, right? Where we see Jesus is is at the table of the sinners and the outcasts, at the table outside of the systems that he was a part of. How can we begin to foster and build relationships at the tables of those around us, inviting them to become part of us, to become part of what God is up to? This is the challenge of being about relationship. It's never just one thing. It's never locked into just showing up to church and just showing up to this activity and doing that thing that we want to do. It's not just about being spiritually fed as if it's all about me. Relationship is give and take. It's sacrifice, self-sacrifice for the sake of somebody else to be in relationship together. It's giving up something so that we can be with and for somebody else, so that we can be with and for God, so we can be about grace. 
Relationship is not easy. Relationship is hard, especially one that's centered on grace and mercy and love. And those things that we see define our faith in Christ. I think that's our challenge, friends, as we begin to come back in person, become the church that God calls us to be, we begin to think about broadening our table, to making it bigger, to welcoming more, to become a part of that. And it starts us to ask those questions, what stumbling blocks does our church erect that keep people away? What kind of walls and barriers do we put up with the way that we organize and the way that we do things that might need to be reformed, that might need to change a little bit, be tweaked a little bit? Not for the sake of change, but for the sake of being and building relationships with God, with each other, and with our neighbors and the world around us. God has brought us here. This is a season that our church is in, and it's not a season of loss and things missing and things never to come back. It's a season of transformation to more fully be who God calls us to be in the strange circumstances that we find ourselves in. So my friends, as we embark on this journey to coming back in person, I am looking forward to it with hope and energy and passion. And I hope you are too. But it's going to mean that things are going to have to change some. They're going to have to be tweaked. They're going to have to shift so that we can be about the building up of the body of Christ here and now and forever. God has great things in store for the Presbyterian Church of Novato. Of that I have no doubt. And we get to be a part of it together, supporting one another, equipping one another, loving one another. And we get to share that with the world out here with our neighbors, here in Novato and even beyond. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.